What's happening, YouTube? This is Jonathan Pariente, the Education 10 here, coming at you guys with a, another video. All right, so the other day the Yankees acquired Zach Britton, which was a good addition, a nice addition to the pen and in an effort to shorten up the game. But the next piece they had to do was starting pitching. And finally... Brian Cashman pulled the trigger on starting pitching. The Yankees acquired J.A. Happ from the Toronto Blue Jays at really a cost of just a couple small players. Billy McKinney, a you know, lower-end prospect, and Brandon Drury, who just really was having trouble finding a spot on the team, and really just injuries really kind of slowed him down uh, throughout this season. So on the bright side now, this gives McKinney and Drury a chance to really play for and really get to have more playing time and just be utilized better, if you ask me. So, what does the signing of J.A. Happ do, and why do I think this was a good move for the Yankees to make? Well, as I mentioned just now, it didn't cost the Yankees much. They didn't have to give up any of their big prospects for him, which I think was a big plus. And, you know, Happ's not like a young guy. He's like 35, 36. I get it. He's... You know, a little bit of you know, a good veteran though to have, and more importantly, he's pitched well in the American League East, and that's something the Yankees need. Somebody that knows the American League East well can pitch against the Red Sox, can pitch against the Rays, can pitch against some of the tougher teams that the Yankees are going to be seeing here over the final two months. So, of course. Everybody thought, eh, the Yankees should have gotten maybe Jacob deGrom. The Mets were not going to move him. The Yankees could have gotten maybe Chris Archer. The Rays were not going to move him. As much as everybody I know has been saying, oh, the Yankees, uh, why'd they waste? You know, Jay Happ was a horrible pick. Uh, he was a terrible... You have to go with what was the best available. Cole Hamels doesn't want to play for New York, and Cole Hamels is not good. All right, granted the Cubbies got him, and, and he'll be... Paul Hamels is better off pitching in the National League than pitching in the American League. Let's just be very real here. There are just certain pitchers that can handle pitching in the American League, and then there's just some that can't. Now, not to say there hasn't been some National Leaguers that have thrived in the American League. Fine, you know. There have been some that have. We'll see where this uh, J.A. Happ acquisition goes. Obviously, now he uh, really bolsters the Yankees' rotation. Now they have a good, solid five that I think the Yankees now can finally uh, go with. And so you now have Hap to be at least an anchor with Sabathia, with Tanaka, with Severino. And, you know, you have Luis Sessa for now, and he looked pretty good. And Sonny Gray's kind of been starting to figure it out for the last three starts. So now you have at least a good five right there. Now... Well, the Yankees, it's great that they have Happ, and they, they boosted up the the starting rotation that they needed to have. You know, they added Britton now to really shorten up the game for the starting pitching, so maybe five innings. So if you get at least four or five innings out of your starter, the bullpen can just shut it down. Well, it's good that they got those pieces, and it's important that they did. This did come with a little bit of bad news. Um, unfortunately, Aaron Judge is going to miss three weeks with a chip fracture in his wrist after he got hit by a pitch in yesterday's game. So, the common theme here would be still the trade deadline's not over. Maybe the Yankees could go after a bat. Maybe just to kind of act as a filler for Judge until he returns. <sighs> Interesting call with that. I mean, the Yankees, you know, have a lot of depth in the outfield, if you ask me. They have prospects down there. They could just bring a couple up if they need to. Wouldn't hurt if the Yankees maybe wanted to pick one up. I would say maybe, you know, realistically, maybe they can go after Mike Moustakas. I think that's a realistic possibility. They've been, Yankees have been trying to get their hands on him uh, throughout this season. Just, you know, Adam Jones wouldn't make sense. I don't think the Yankees need him. <laughs> You know, if you get Moustakas, then he becomes a bench player for the rest of the year. But he's a good guy to have off the bench if, if you're in a tight spot. And he hasn't really been having a good year. So, But uh, that's all said and done for when Judge comes back. Right now, three weeks, he can't swing a bat. So 
you add that into maybe about a week where he has to come back and rehab, you're looking at Judge being out for about as long as Gary's out, about a month. You're better off that this happened now than happened later, and you're better, and you're very lucky that this was not worse. It was just a chip fracture, not a full fracture, or you could have missed the whole year. So, we'll see. We'll see where the Yankees take this now, and we'll see uh, how the Yankees are going to tackle this these next few weeks without the without Judge in the lineup. So the Yanks are finishing up a series at home for the a uh, five game homestand. Three more against the Royals, and then a brief two-game series against the Baltimore Orioles. Then the Yankees are going to go back on the road, and of course the road is Fenway Park. So I'm curious how the Yankees will tackle this coming Red Sox series without Judge and how they're going to go about it with their newly revamped pen. Obviously knowing the Yankees, they're going to see, they're going to probably see Chris Sale in this series. I would not be shocked if they do. They might even see Nathan Evaldi, who just was acquired by them. So very possible the Yanks see Evaldi. Probably will see Sale. Perhaps my next gut guess is maybe even Rick Porcello, because I don't think the Yanks would want. I don't think the Red Sox are just going to throw David Price out there. The Yankees, uh, the Yankees, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they uh, hit the tar out of him on a Sunday night game uh, about a few weeks back. So I don't think the Red Sox want to even consider throwing David Price against the Yanks. So, we'll see where the Yankees are going to go from here. They have a relatively easier schedule the second half of the year, but it is going to get a little tougher in September. I will bring that point up. Not only do the Yankees have to end the year with Boston, they still haven't even gone on the road to Seattle and to Oakland yet. And those two teams are on fire right now, particularly Oakland. So the Yankees know they'll have to see Oakland, and West Coast trip in, in September is a very, uh, that's a touch-and-go situation. It's not easy to play games on the West Coast if you're from the East Coast. It's a whole different time zone you have to adjust to. And to do it this late in the year, in, in September. I'm going to test the Yankees a bit. I'm curious where they're going to be by September. Uh, not jumping ahead of things. But if the Yankees are really going to have a chance here, not only are they going to have to tread water for four weeks, Yankees have to take this coming series in Fenway. That's an absolute must. Otherwise, that could pretty much decide the season from there. We'll see, Yankee fans. So you just pray for a speedy recovery on Judge. Curious how Hap is going to fit in. I'm curious what Hap will do in his first start which probably will be in about a week from now. And, of course, we'll see how much better this Yankee bullpen really adjusts. Britain had a very nice debut last night. So we'll see where the Yankees use Britain and where they're going to use everybody else in the pen. This will, this will be very interesting. But for now, Beast of the East, Jonathan Pariente. Education 10. Saying so long. <laughs>